Well, I saw Jesus, but I also saw George. Today? Uh, wait, should I talk about that? Yeah, 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 I saw George on an airplane. Really? Yeah. For real? Yeah, I was, I was getting loaded up to come here the other day. Yeah. The idea of all, all of us as ex co hosts is sick. I think all yeah, of I us, think dude. It's... <laughs> now yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, man, it's been a good run, Logan. But the $2,300 I made in the past six months is not going to stop saying that, bro. Everyone's going to know we don't make any money from this show. You guys, that's the good news of you leaving. You're missing out on no, no financial thing. gains. Zero. Oh. <laughs> you make. We're you talking, make. We're talking yesterday. Spencer and I got a lot of O's. We got those residual checks that just said zero dollars every week. Yeah, yeah. Six months. <laughs> yeah, we definitely send checks that say you've made no money. I'm still getting. I'm still getting them. I get them all the time. Look, we don't do this show for the money. We do it because we love you guys. We like. That's it. We love you guys. <laughs> well, you and guys. The, are you? Did you kidding? just? Did you really just do I that? I was about to start the show. And the, he was about to start the show. Can I go? I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is why we don't get paid. We're talking over each other. A lot of co-hosts. Amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Impulsive, guys. The number one podcast in the world. Well, well, well. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. We're all a little loose right now, and I'll tell you why. We're in Miami. We're in Miami. We got the gang back. The boys are back. Macklin Bilski and Spencer Taylor are in and the, the house. Woo! Well, ex co hosts that we bullied off. <laughs> here, to, here to tell our story. Expose Please expose us on the show. Please, no, it's, be careful, good. Yeah. it's good to have you guys back. It's good to uh, be back. And I had a taxing day yesterday. Let me tell you something. What'd you do? <laughs> Kevin Owens is better than I thought. He's good. He's very good. I made fun of him uh, frequently. Uh, I called him all sorts of things. I called him Humpty Dumpty of WWE. <laughs> called, him, uh, <laughs> called him a school, a four-year-old schoolboy because he dressed like a teenager. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I, you do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All sorts of things. What's but, up, uh, fellow kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I underestimated him and uh, I'm in a little bit of pain. I'm in a little bit of pain that for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I did retain my title against all odds for the first time. <laughs> yeah. End up giving me this one title as the world rumble. That, you know, that's all it takes. One title defense at a time. Uh, who knows? At this rate, I could be the next Roman Reigns. And uh, I'm in pain, but I bled. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. You smell good. Uh, Spencer's been smelling me. Yeah. Yeah, you Fuck. smell good. <laughs> smell like victory. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to smell like victory after tonight, Detroit Lions. Let's ball game go. <laughs> you scheduled this episode during the shit. I know. Spencer's from wrong. Detroit. That's why it's a big This is a big deal. Yeah, yeah it's a huge deal. Hey, if the Cleveland Never Browns were going to the Super Bowl, I would not be on this you fucking would shit not podcast. Have <laughs> <laughs> you went into outer space on the frog squash. Right. I do want to just say that one thing. Yeah. You got higher than me in fucking 2004. Yeah. Was <laughs> you were in. You were in outer space. That shit was, was crazy. That was a good pop, dude. I was sending it. Yeah. The uh, you know the position of the match was difficult. Uh, we were after the women's Royal Rumble and the Fatal Four Way with Roman Reigns, where he also retained his championship, and Paul Heyman. After the match comes out, he, and everyone's like chest out. They knew they just blew the fucking roof off with Roman. Paul Hammond goes, come here, so Motivation's going to be over. And I'm like, what's up, Paul? He goes, you want some motivation? I go, absolutely. He goes, follow that part of the Fuck, He goes, well, you can do it. And Kevin, um, he's, he's, he's ruthless, man. I'll be honest with you. He, my chest is all, it's still, he has fingerprints on my chest. My shoulder. Five star? My shoulder. Uh, you have a bloody nose bleeding. too. Oh my yeah. god! I know. He made you bleed. Oh, you got a band -aid? I was, I'll be honest. I underestimated him, but uh, I was playing chess and he was playing checkers. Do you think the show's got too wrestly? I got people telling me the show's become too wrestling. What do you mean too wrestling? Is the impulsive now wrestling? Program? Oh, this show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. Oh, we had John Cena. John Cena. John Cena's not a wrestler. He's a he's an octagon. So fucking. Hey, what do you mean by that? 
He's an eight-sided shape of entertainment. He's an octomom. He's 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 a wrestler. He's an actor. He's an impact maker. He's has so many aspects. If you look at John Cena, you think he's a, a wrestler here. He's perfect, dude. Yeah, I was trying to, to, to find the chink in the armor. I couldn't. You know when you meet someone like that, you're like, you know, what are they gonna be like in person? And then they just exceed your expectations. To do that. He's so wise. I mean, I left before all these superstars came on, but it's pretty awesome to see. Well, That's you were it. around for Ben Shapiro. <laughs> that's true, and that's true. <laughs> For the politicos out there, just put on one of the best debates I've seen uh, a couple days ago on the Lex Friedman show, which is one of the best podcasts in the world, by the way. Ben Shapiro and uh, Destiny had a massive uh, debate where they were very respectful to each other, uh, discussed a myriad of topics regarding American and global uh, politics, and it was an incredible program. Over three hours, there's just incredible political debate, Logan. If you care to watch it, it's a fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure it's on his list. Yeah, I'll definitely right. be watching that. <laughs> I love how I love how no, like the world is is absolutely crazy, and yep. I love like getting on social media and seeing Logan just body slam someone. <laughs> I'm serious, like it's good. You have to hold down the entertainment and keeping people's spirits light. I'm it's serious, man. Actually I'm good, actually this serious. This is a good topic. Mm -hmm. To it's talk a, to it's you some about. heavy shit going on in the I, world. Spencer, it's really hard for me to invest myself in the heavy shit. Yeah. Because I think for a lot of people they resonate with that. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, it's like it's it's hard, dude. It's shit is fucking heavy. The world is in shambles in some parts. We we talked about this yesterday about uh how you spend your energy and service to to different people. And uh Spence has obviously been in a war zone delivering care packages to people in need. Yeah. And uh I personally can't do that. You don't invest your time in political things or getting involved in that world, but you are leading the charge, keeping people smiling all the time. It's what I'm good at and it's what I like to do, which is kind of selfish to say, but like, you know, I'd like to think in some weird way, I do serve a purpose in making people feel better about just life in general. Um, but it, it also serves me, which is kind of where like the, it could be interpreted like a little selfishly if you're being like super woke but like spencer I, this is this is a good question like after impulsive man what have you been doing i know what you've been doing but tell me what you've yeah, been yeah. doing i mean a pretty substantial 180 yeah in a way yeah um but i mean you guys have gotta give credit where credit's due i mean you gave me the space to go down to the amazon i don't know if you remember that well, during the forest fires in 2019 mm -hmm. and that was kind of where i dipped my toes into the humanitarian work just you know, that was a quick mission. We gave uh, firefighters gear, we went down there and like, you know, really activated. Um, but then flash forward to the war in Ukraine breaking out. That was, I don't know, man, my heart just felt for those people suffering in the war. And it really messed with me. Like I was struggling for multiple months. And uh, the guy that I met down in the Amazon, Michael Capone, he uh, runs an organization called Global Empowerment Mission. Uh, I saw that he went out to Ukraine and they were doing a lot of stuff, so I just went out there. I just decided to go out to uh, Warsaw and then went into Ukraine. I was was it an active war zone when you were oh, there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would wake up in Kiev, and there'd be, like, missiles exploding in the air. Oh, my God. And, uh, like, the first night I stayed there, there was, like, kamikaze drones hitting, like, two blocks away. Like, crazy shit. How do you Now deal? it's much more stable there. It's, like, a different situation in Kiev. I mean, there's still missiles, though, that fly in. It's, it's nuts, man. How do you deal with the, <clears throat> like, misinformation that is kind of rampant on social around that conflict? Because it's obviously been a heavily politicized topic, both here mm -hmm. and abroad. It's become, you know, a left versus right political issue here in the States with certain people and certain sides supporting Ukraine, certain sides supporting Russia, other people saying that we shouldn't be involved whatsoever and that our money should remain home. You know, yeah. what do you what do you say to people that are that are saying that kind of stuff yeah. or having those type of opinions? I mean, it's a deep question. I'm not gonna claim I know the answer to that because you know America has its fair share of doing stupid stuff but at the same time I think if we are the nation that represents freedom and um, you know then I think we have to help people preserve their own freedom because the Ukrainian people are under assault they're getting attacked they're getting their land stolen you know and they have a right to defend themselves so I fully support Ukraine I yeah. think I think we should I think it's it's a whole nother conversation if we want to get into like the specifics as to why, but it is actually much more important. And I think over the coming years we're gonna see that conflict hopefully 
de-escalate, which we don't have voices calling for de-escalation. There needs to be that, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We're going to see over the next couple of years where that goes. It's just wild to see how <clears throat> all of those conflicts play out obviously now there's even a newer conflict with and you know another massive conflict with with gaza yeah. and and which i'll be there in a couple of weeks oh are you going to actually transition over to impact there yeah as well? i was in cairo we're doing uh we're delivering supplies into gaza so into southern gaza you're just helping you're help. exactly you're not really yeah. you're not really in it to try to absolutely sway or or no. but do you follow everything that's going on with like the international court court of justice and like everything that's going on of with, course with who's on whose side so on and so forth. yeah we don't take sides if there's people suffering we're gonna help so and that's obvi so you're obviously we're gonna, we're for humanity. So you'll be providing supplies to Gaza. At, we already assume. are. Got yeah, it. we Got already it. are. Got Why it. are you such a good person, <laughs> bro? I'm just I'm just trying to be a better version of myself every day, man. That's all I'm trying to do. Visualize yourself better every day. That's it. That's a vibe. That's it, man. That's a vibe. I'm just trying to inspire other people to you know answer the call to the suffering in the world. But surely it's you 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 feel good or some sort of calling to help your 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 species like where where does that come from yeah Oof. it's a good question there i you know for me it i think the purpose of life the meaning of life is to be of service is to help other people you know like jesus talks about you know the kingdom of heaven is in the poor in spirit it's not in the rich and the you know, I mean, we're in a pretty rich crib right now. <laughs> yeah, it might not hey, be man. here. Can we green, can we green screen <laughs> some exactly. like favelas behind us <laughs> or something like that? Like, this is a shit place yeah. to be having this combo. Yeah. Logan would prefer to have it on the moon if he could, yeah. but this will yeah, do for now. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, I mean, I, I know when we were in Puerto Rico for the hurricane, you know, when you came out to support us as well, which, you know, big shout out to you. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of things to do in the world. It can be overwhelming. We want to like turn our face away from it. It's like, ah, we almost like a lot of people say like, oh, that's negative. I don't want to talk about it. But it's actually, it's, it's a certain, like we were talking about this, Mac. It's like a certain form of medicine to look at the suffering in the world and face it and actually embrace it and not turn away. And uh, it's overwhelming no matter what, no matter how you look at it. And instead of complaining about it, which a lot of people do, or, you know, protesting. It's like, let's activate. Let's go there. Let's serve. Let's help people. You know, I always love the the global impact stuff. And I I sit pretty center aisle on a lot of topics. It depends what you ask me about. But I've been straying away a little bit over the past few months to year because I am noticing how badly our own country is falling apart. And it is it is it is making me a little bit less... Apt. I'll just go ahead and be yep. fucking blunt right now to want to help people when our people are dying, when our border is completely fucking devastated, when we have no control there, when I live in a city in a state that is over fucking run, when we have laws that make no fucking sense in yep. a lot of the states of this country where people can break laws, people can break into people's houses, people can commit violence against one another with absolutely no reprimand, absolutely no penalty. They're it's back nuts. out on the streets that night. We don't ask for IDs for people that are crossing the border. We allow people who cross the border illegally to fly. If they don't have an ID, they can fill out a form. I need an ID to fly. Some of the people that are coming to this country have more rights than I do yeah, right it's now. Nuts. So not to go like too far fucking psychopath I, are right you now, moving to florida is that what you're well about to well announce? listen there's a very there's a very heavy chance that i'm going to be considering a, a move from california soon because because we because because listen you guys know you know where i stand i i'm fair i love people i love helping i love impact but we're losing 150,000 people a year to, to fentanyl overdoses and opiate overdoses and drug addiction in this country. We're not helping our veterans. We're not helping, you know, people with other uh, mental illness problems. We are we are a hurt country right now. And and I love the idea that we're continuing to help and and play global watchdog and global police and help other countries. But but I, I think I have been personally a little bit slow where a lot of people have been a little bit quicker to me than me. And realizing that we we need a lot of fucking help in this country right now. And I'm not going to point a finger at one person and say they caused it or this person is going to fix it. But we really, really need to start thinking about how we fix some of the issues that are going on in yeah, this country. I right think now. it's, it's a very... That's part of this problem. 
It's a, it's a very anti-American. It's, it's, it, it seems it seems like. Do we need so to get that, GP so that, in here? That, no, that but it does seem like. It does seem like. Is Greg Paul? And if there's if there's one person who could speak on this subject with absolute authority and position, it's my father. The so, chair needs to <laughs> slide in. Who's gonna slide the chair? In? So, someone. So yeah, someone in. bring Greg get Paul in. in there. One, I, one thing I'll add on that, and Mike, because I think you're opening up a good thing. It, it's a valid concern, and I think so many people feel that, like, hey, why should we support them if we've got our own issues? And I totally agree with that. I think it's a yes and for sure. But yeah, and Mike, before you, before Greg has his. Uh, uh, what would this? <laughs> oh, it's gonna go. Oh, it's gonna, yeah, yeah. You are helping. You help your people. You might not be able to help with uh, a global situation, but the people that you do help are the ones that struggle with the d addictions and uh, overcoming their deepest, darkest demons. Because you created a beacon of light with your book and everything, so you are helping, and you do change the world. But it's in your own way, in the way that you felt called to to serve. So you're not. I think if every person that. can 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 you, can do that, it, what'd you just say? <laughs> GP coming in. It's all right. I, I, it's true. We, Spence, Spence and I have been talking about this like for the past couple of days, just the way that people help because it's it's very difficult for everyone to want to get involved into a, a global crisis. But if everyone helped in a certain way that they felt comfortable with doing or passionate about. and not feel the the obligation to help beyond what they can, they it, it would be better. Now, now I'm gonna I'm a I'm gonna play um a little devil's avocados here, but even the ability to help. I feel like is a bit of a blessing because some people are just so focused on their family and trying to pay their next for bill, sure survival you know? mode. Like, I mean, a lot of the country is in survival mode, bro. Like paycheck to paycheck, more than ever. And, and and so like even even being able to have the time to think about helping other people is a blessing because you don't have to worry about protecting yourself and your loved ones, which is insane. Um, Greg, do you have anything to say about the current state of the United States? <laughs> no, come yeah. on, direct them, direct them. <laughs> Trump 2024. Oh, yeah, here we go. We're in it. We're in it. <laughs> yeah. Should Vivek be his vice president? Yeah, yeah. Vivek, I told Vivek uh, when he was at Jake's thing, I'm like, you should just step down to be vice president. You're not gonna, you're not gonna make it as president. He's like, and he's like, well, I can't. And he blah, listened. Blah. <laughs> he listened. Apparently, he listened. Yeah, I mean, he stepped down. And uh, DeSantis, I told him the same thing. He stepped down. So what about our what about RFK? There's been a lot of talk. Lately GP, about are you RFK secretly running a... the country right now? Are you calling the shots? <laughs> I'm not saying nothing about that, but <laughs> I do want I want I do want to go on with with um, the ass kiss that you're doing with Mike. Mike, <laughs> that's called you... supporting your friend. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, He's just GP's joking. He's funny. Yeah. I just want to tell you, Mike. You seem like you got a little softer, a little kinder, a little. I think your your girlfriend has a lot to do with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, so look at that smile. I want to give kudos to her. Yeah, round of applause, oh, dude. And, uh, my beautiful Latina girl. And it, and it looks good on you. Thank you. Yeah, but I didn't. Even, I don't even feel all that extra kind to trying to turn this energy back here. But like, let's direct some of this energy for a second. Right now, the the, the biggest ongoing issue is we have a we have a major issue at the border. Right now, let's get let's get political for ten minutes, and then we'll shift on to something else. I met Jesus today underwater, which was wild. But but uh, we have a, a strange conflict right now between our own federal government and the state of Texas. The state of Texas is saying, yo, we're going to secure this border. We're going to defy uh, federal guidelines and federal, uh, you know, enforcement that is telling us that we have to cut razor wire, that we have to allow the Border Patrol to run this border. We're going to we're going to run this border ourselves. And we have this very interesting standoff right now between, you know, the state of Texas, Texas Rangers and and. Department of Job, or, you know, Homeland Security and and uh, Border Patrol, and it's going to be very interesting over the next couple of weeks to see what happens there. Who who is actually going to end up, you know, securing the border, right? And how that's all going to look because, you know, when you start to have a state defy the federal government like that, it gets pretty fucking messy sometimes. It's a very wild situation down at the border. I want to say mm -hmm. something. Well, yeah, as as the host of this show, absolutely, sir. everything you're saying is very important little heavy for you it's not it's not just it's that just like why would anyone come to this show to listen to us talk about politics all right how about this That's i just wanted to bring insane. the issues up we, no you're, you're right. right no you're no you're right uh, and spencer this is my problem well spencer he has maybe that's no, why no 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 he has an opinion i have an opinion this motherfucker has an opinion that's right true. Candace Owens has an opinion. Ben Shapiro has an opinion. Mm, yes. everyone, they all, everyone's just like saying stuff. Mm -hmm, everyone, mm -hmm. Everyone's just saying so much stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much to download and process. And, and who 
pun intended, is the trump card. Who 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 knows the most and has the best moral compass to guide where this country should go and why and 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 how are we going to listen to them and and why should we listen to them? And I'm almost overwhelmed by all the chatter and yep. then become sort of disinterested cuz I don't know what to do with my hands. That's what it feels like. Yep. What well, everyone just who's, said, who's right? Who's who's speaking the most fact? It just no, it's it, feel, very, it, it feels like we're just point. so divided, and everyone has a thought about something, and we can talk about this, but like, where does the change come in? And that's why I feel like if I'm gonna get involved in something, I really want to feel like it's gonna make an impact, a real impact. And I've looked at the all the um, philanthropic verticals that there are, and I'm, I'm trying to decide like where I want to contribute because i don't just want to do it in like a way where i'm going to participate i want to really like make a change if i'm going to devote part of myself and my brand and my time and energy into into doing good for the world and spencer again you're a good person to talk about with this is because the one i always land on is education yeah i feel like if 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 people kids were raised with a little more emotional eq uh raised to play to their strengths learn their weaknesses be vulnerable vulnerable about their weaknesses and turn those into strengths and just be kind of like wiser more well-rounded human beings yeah. eventually not immediately 20 30 40 50 years from now the world would be in such a better place because everyone is better at being themselves and knowing how to contribute in the best way they can to a world that should feel like a unit. Like we, I, like why can't humans be like an ant colony where we're all working together for the same goal and that is to preserve our species. Because it's bad for business. Yeah, that's why. But that sucks, well, man. That really like, sucks. Unfortunately, that's that's just the fact of the matter. It's just it's just we we and and quickly and then please Spencer take over. I apologize for even opening this can of worms. You're a hundred percent right. And I, I want to say that I, I almost feel I, I have a personal reason to be on this rampage today, as a lot of people on the show know, I'm not going to get into it today, but I've had some happenings over the past uh, 24 hours that are, that are driving me a little bit. I have always been one to try to steer clear of this. I've always been one that realized that generally speaking, these conversations really don't go anywhere. Yeah. It's a lot of walking, it's yeah. a lot of running in circles. It ends up in a lot of screaming and yelling, which is why I brought up the Destiny and Ben Shapiro conversation because it was very much not that. Yeah. And I liked that conversation. I just simply wanted to present something, but you're 100% right. The, the, the last point I'll put in on it is when you're talking about progress for this country, when you're talking about fixing this country, when you're, ta when you're talking about what you're asking of the candidate that you're gonna vote for next, what you should be trying to figure out is who is the best to unite the aisles. We have two parties right now who are very much willing to spend their entirety of time blocking each other's shots. Two basketball teams, neither want to score, they just want to make sure the other team doesn't. That is not an effective approach for a country. That is not an efficient way to run a superpower, and it's never going to work for us. The best person for our office right now is somebody that is able to make both sides listen, pre present facts, and make people come to the table and agree on something to pass a bill that benefits this country. Work together. United we stand, divided we fall. I'll say that until the end of my fucking life, dude. Beautiful. Uh, to bring it back to education and get away from the politics thing, one thing that I know for a fact I have seen from you personally that I've been thinking about for a very long time that will rely on Greg to answer this question. To inspire the youth, one of the things I always saw in you was that you gave your absolute all to your education. You poured yourself into your studies at every single moment. Every class you got an A, correct? Yeah. It is not cool to do good in school right now, to do well in school. <laughs> Where did that come from? And was that something that you always wanted him to do? No, you know, we wanted him to study, do their homework, do their thing, but Logan was beyond. I mean, his senior year, he already had a um, scholarship to OU. He, his GPA was 4.75 or some crap like that. It's the middle of may yep yeah but yeah but dad i don't know if you remember this let me jog your memory up until the fifth grade the fifth grade 10 years old i was not a good student Did, is that ringing any bells 
I would I would cheat in school. You were I, a punk. I would I was a punk. My was, dad didn't like you. No, I was a punk. I was a young fucking like troublemaker who played pranks in school. I'd get bad grades. I'd cheat off people. Like I was a not a good student. Shout out to Mrs. Schoenfeld. Mrs. Lingren and Miss Schoenfeld. I don't know if you remember. Uh, uh, we're in class one day. I get in trouble. I get a detention. Uh, I, I told some teacher like tough luck. As she as she she said something, I was like, "Oh, tough luck." Got a detention. I didn't really know what it meant, but I was like, "I don't know." Anyway. <laughs> I, I got a detention. Probably learned that from him. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 uh, and I'm I'm in the detention room, and she's like, "Yo, I, th you're a smart kid. I know I know you're a smart kid. Like you're witty. You come up with things on the spot. Like you're just not trying. Can you do me a favor? Just one, please. This is the only thing I'll ask you this school year. I'm gonna give you note cards." with the answers on the back of them to the subject that we're talking about. It was history. Just try to memorize them. You're here in this detention for an hour. Just please try to memorize them. We'll see how you do on the test. I was like, whatever. <laughs> Looked at the note cards front and back, asked the question, learned the answer. Test comes that week. Motherfucker, I got a 97. <laughs> I looked at this paper, I went, oh my God. I'm not a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, I, yo, I might have a little something. And... She was able to recognize that I had a ability to use my brain. Mm. And she showed me that I was smart, bro. I realized I was smart. I didn't know this. And although he comes off as, you know, Greg, uh, <laughs> he's smart. His, 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 his dad is a, is a fucking genius. My mom's father is a genius. My mom's smart. Like intelligence ran in our family. Um, and when I learned that I was a, smart kid who was also a troublemaker i knew i could impress people if i just applied myself but um i appreciated school because it taught me how to learn it taught my brain how to function and problem solve and for that reason i knew there was value in that but i i didn't necessarily have any subjects that played to my 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 real my real strengths and I think I think the ultimate form of like the perfect education system involves like looking at a group of students like like they're they're animals. Don't take this the wrong way. But like one person's a fish, one person's a gorilla, one person's um, a, a bird, and uh, the bird can fly well, but the bird can't swim well. The fish can swim well, but it can't climb a tree well. And so like, what are you fucking good at? What are you the best at? What is your child innately? Uh, in tune with and how can you amplify that yeah. the right. issue is the issue is you need the working class and we'll always come back to that is like you need someone who's going to work that nine to five and put in those man hours and do that manual labor for some of the jobs and work in the factories and i think that's how the education system you 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 know this i'm, I'm saying stuff yeah. you already oh, know you're, but like you're saying that people are put down so that they don't excel and become their best person. The, the country because. was built to create worker bees. Absolutely. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Well, I think you're absolutely onto something big because one of my favorite quotes is from Aristotle and it's the fate of empires rests in the education of youth. So your Aristotle said that? Yeah. So you're right. absolutely I think you're Aristotle. <laughs> Oh, um, I said I was the yes man. Oh, are you just fucking? I, it came out, dude. I'm sorry. Philosopher, <laughs> I'm sorry. Of I'm sorry. all time, no, but, but also, but also, uh, counter your point, or I guess this is a question. Don't you think the world needs ditch diggers too? Like it's not well, like, the issue. It's, like, not, bro, the issue. it's not about no, no, that. Some people might like digging ditches. That's another thing exactly. too. Some people really do enjoy it. And then also, like I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Like you can. I I do like the idea of like catering a a program around individual strengths and weaknesses. Right. That that should be the goal of the education system. But let's also not go in there and be and tell every person that they're gonna be a, mil a multi million dollar entrepreneur, creative genius you know the biggest rapper the big because then that's going to start I, the, you well, can be well that's you the, can that's, be that's, but that's part of the problem with the american dream is because you know you look on social media and and people that are looked up to and that people aspire to be have all these things and successes turned into this weird form of like financial success but that's not what success is so, dude so if you can go home every night look yourself in the mirror and be like yo i'm happy my life is good. I like what I do. I get to spend time with people that I love. I have a dog. 
I've, I, I have a family. Like life is fucking good. That's ha yeah. happiness should be the goal rather than any form of success dictated by but you're also, success, but you're success and happiness are personally defined it's facts yeah that's true too. right so you can achieve success in any career path to get to that point requires someone like your teacher who did who said the one thing that inspired you that one spark so to how, how do you get educators to get to that point and it might not be the teacher in the school it might be a parent it might be a, a friend a family member whatever but to, to get to that point of success is a yeah, you have to the the whole system itself has to go through a rewiring, but the change is happening in pockets outside of the system, as I think is kind of like every problem right now in our country, right? Like focusing on the government and all that shit, like ah, like no, like let's actually just go and build. Like to your point, Logan, let's just go out and build the change. Let's be the change we want to see in the world. And there are a lot of people doing that right now. But there's also a lot of really it, powerful people blocking it from happening. Of course. It, because it doesn't put money into their pockets. Yeah, you can't be naive of the beast that we are all fighting. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What, but that's, yeah. what do you mean, what, what beast? The, the interest, yeah. The, 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 the financial the interest matrix. against... Uh, no, don't do Matrix or Deep State. Like, let's just be honest. Like The financial interest some, against, you know... The, the thing think? that we want to create. We want to create freedom. There's people keep, that have no, no, monopolized no, the system. It feels, yeah. Unfortunately, it feels good for the government if you keep people dumb. Yeah. Look what for we sure. just went That's through. I, for sure. I have a question for Greg. I have a question for Greg. How did, how did you inspire your children to be aware and uh, conscious of their, their lifestyle? So one thing is they weren't allowed to say can't growing up. If they, if they said can't, I'd make them do push-ups. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I'd what be like, don't tell me you can't. Do Let's figure out a way you can. We go around it, get through it, break through it, whatever it is. Uh, but we also, I was constantly doing stuff with them. Um, like, I'd take them down to the Metro Parks, and we'd walk along. And we'd play Don't Touch the Ground, and we'd walk along on the logs and go from log to log to log. And they would have to problem solve because they'd walk to, they'd walk to an end of a log and be like, oh, shit, there's not another log. What do we have to do? And I'd make Logan lead and I'd make Jake lead. So so they were naturally learning how to problem solve and be a leader in a fun way. Yo, actually what you're talking about, so my film is The Death of Recess. What you're talking about is the solution to the system. It's actually making play. You know, in the country, our school system, the national average, get this, of recess is 20 minutes per day. Yeah. 20 minutes yeah so they've just taken the play and the joy out of learning and made it all about testing getting into college because it makes money which my film will get into but you're right it's yeah. about making learning fun because the goal should be to create lifelong learners which you are you're learning wwe now you're learning how to start a multi hundred million dollar business you are a lifelong learner that is that should be the product and that's like the thing to celebrate so it helps so when you're invested in a subject though like if you can learn about something you love it doesn't feel like work purpose passion. so here, here's yeah. here's one in that was a big pet peeve of mine in school kids would have a, a bake sale and they'd make cookies or brownies and sell them for 10 cents or some bullshit and one was like, oh, dad, we want to, we're going to sell cookies. We're going to ma make money for whatever. I'm like, okay, well, the cookies cost $3.50. The doughs, the chips are this much. So it's costing you 11 bucks. How many cookies can you make? If you can only make 10 cookies, we got to charge 55 cents a cookie to break even. Otherwise, you're not making any money. And if, if you're going to do that, then just give the $11 to the school. Fuck the bake sales. He, he was running yeah. spreadsheets. Yeah. My motherfucker was incorporating <laughs> cost of goods <laughs> on our local school fundraiser. Yeah. You're so, going to make the but, school buy your cookies, boys. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to pack them. We're going to do the it for school lunches. The school was lunches. promoting yeah. a, a position where they're losing money. Business-wise, it was the dumbest idea. And as a young kid, they could all understand that because the math was easy enough. But you're, you're talking about subject matter, and I think the thing that we're like collectively overlooking, except for Greg, who obviously innately gets it, is... The biggest thing here is the role of the father, the role of the, the parents in the life and the investment of the parents in the life of, the sh of children in this country and in the world, right? Like we're talking about these specific subjects, going log to log, teaching them about the bake sale, telling them they can't say can't. But in reality, the biggest thing Greg's talking about is he was there for them. Yeah. Every step of the way, he was teaching them. He was investing in their fucking lives. Yeah, good parenting. And, and, good, parents. good parenting. And that's like, at the end of the day, like, we could talk about the school system. We could talk about the government. We could talk about the laws in this country. But at the end of the day, 
failures of, of children as failures of parents. Yes, yes and yeah. no. Two, two, yes, two, mo yes, most yes, of the because time. you're right. But, ima time. but imagine if the parents were raised and there was a course on parenting in general. Yeah, that's like, yeah, like, like those those kids who are educated the right way will eventually be great parents. Right. And 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 you're right, parenting is 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 so important. Paramount. You know, it's parenting is paramount. <laughs> <laughs> um but like it 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 is it is crucial to the development of a child because if the school isn't doing the job, it's 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 on the parents to make sure that their human becomes a productive, useful um, law po abiding. positive member of society like this is this is this is gonna be so, well you got you got to be willing to put in the, the hard fight and, <laughs> and put in the hard time i mean there were you know it's like my i would That's remember i'd tell you guys I'd go, welcome to life get the fuck over it they'd be bitching about something that i'd have them doing and my comment was welcome to life. Get the fuck something. over it. when you point that camera at greg is spencer's Mike stick right in his yeah, face probably but i gotta uh, can we, should we move him over a little a little bit yeah, I, I, Greg, I can, move, to, move to your left a little bit. Hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. How's that? Is that good? I want to. I want to say something that could be a little controversial. It's only controversial because you say that. First. All right. All right. Yeah. If you yeah, stop hey, press, prefacing, then Jed would not think. No. No. Because it's, <laughs> I have an idea. I have an idea. Right. Okay. Because obviously, <laughs> I'm, I'm running for president. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, say you don't uh, like politics uh, no. and then run for president. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm not running for president. That job is way too hard. And, <sighs> and fuck it that. Sucks. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, it's so that. Worst job in the world. No Worst. matter what. You, get, you don't even get paid properly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, it sucks. But uh, here's an idea. Here's an idea. Uh, I'm going to get a little heavy for a sec. Just one sec. 260? Uh, heavier. Heavier than we've been. There's uh there's nothing worse than the idea of sending your child to school and thinking that they could get caught up in a school shooting. It is the saddest thought that I can imagine. A environment that is supposed to be apt for learning and growing as a young human turns into a fucking war zone. It is the worst thing that our country faces regularly. It fucking sucks. And everyone has ideas on how to how to how to how to stop these things from happening and like it was weird because when covid was happening everyone was happy that the school shootings went down which obviously because no one was in school but like that was a that was a statistic that was like shocking it was like no one's in school so there's less school shootings obviously but as soon as school comes back like it's back and, I, and our country unlike any other country faces like an absurd amount of 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 these incidents um, and so, you know, like what, what are the solutions? What are actually like viable solutions that don't involve going against our constitution and, and the second amendment and, and that don't involve like having to arm teachers and teaching them how to be like members of a militia to, to face a gunman or, or, or even having like a security guard on campus with a gun, which has failed before. Like a good guy with a gun doesn't stop a bad guy with a gun. We've learned. Unfortunately, that's just not true. That's what the people who statistically it doesn't, it, there so, are cases. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So, sometimes yeah. I'm not willing for sometimes, you know, like what is a foolproof solution? What is, what will increase our odds in the best way possible? And I bring this up because it takes me back to the parenting conversation is like, you're raising this kid. You don't see the demons. You don't, you don't know he has these thoughts. You don't know, you don't know your son is a, or daughter is a little perverse in this way or has access to a fucking automatic rifle. Why are there not consequences for parents of school shooters under the age of 18? Cause Oftentimes, the, sh the, the perpetrator either dies or is prosecuted as a minor, but it was raised by either an ignorant or clueless parent, and it is your job to make sure that person is at least bare minimum, like, like, like sane or uh, law-abiding well, well, or, or, or productive. Well, I have, an answer. I have an answer for you. So, so the biggest issue, the real biggest issue that we have in this country once again, back to what I was saying earlier, is is mental health. We have a massive, massive, massive mental illness problem and resource underwhelm or overwhelm, I'm sorry, in this country. And so as a 46-year-old mom of a kid in Missouri who starts to show, show signs of schizophrenia or writes a manifesto on violence or something, so on and so forth, what do you do? 
what is the playbook for that mom? You you go say you're in a say you're in a blue state, for example. Say you're in New York or California, and you find out that your kid is 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 showing these type of signs. You go and you report this to the authorities. the The authorities say, well, unfortunately, we by law can't take this person. You know, by by resources, even if we could by law, we have nowhere to put them. We, there's yeah. nothing we can do about this. So even if you do satisfy your requirements as a parent to maintain the safety of your child, I, why are we in a, why are we in a position? Why are we in a position where the mom has to send her kid yeah. off somewhere? How about this, exactly. son? I've been a little kind of worried about your behavior recently. Like, are you okay? Talk to me. Okay. What's on and your they, mind? And that, that, takes you say, that takes intentional effort from the, the parent who might be suffering from Yeah, many stress, parents can't. Mental health issues. Let me say something. Because I've been in school environments that are 100% safe. This cannot exist. It does not exist. And they're operating outside of the school system. But I'll tell you what I believe the solution is after being in like hundreds of schools. I think the solution to ending this violence, like Mike, what you said, both of you said, is mental health. Where in the current curriculum is there anything to do with social emotional learning? It's all cramming people down this line of stress, grades, comparison, judging. It's it's ass backwards. It's ass totally. backwards. The whole thing, as kids, we don't have these issues. It, it's because of our society. So adult thinking, how we're kind of, we've been talking, is not going to fix the problem. We have to keep the, the sacredness of the mental health that we're born into. We have to allow that to flourish through the system. So we have to have social emotional learning as the core of our education system. We don't have it at all. It's not in the curriculum. Because they're cram, they want to cram more tests down. They want to remove recess. Removing recess statistically is horrible, especially for boys. So the school shootings, it's a product of a failed system. So like taking away guns and doing it, it's a waste of time. It's not going to fix it. What's going to fix it is if we completely restructure our education system with social emotional learning at the center. But, sure, but that there's, only there's, goes there's ways to identify these individuals. Like, like a hundred percent. If you look you, at the majority of the shootings, they knew you, you know it was you know, you know who the fuck it and is. If you, so how do the parents if not you had, know? No, no, no. If but you know, if the if parents you, did know, if you okay, play this out. Greg, you're the parent. Logan's the child. Greg comes up to you and says, "Hey, I've noticed you've been acting kind of strange lately. Is there something you want to talk to me about?" And you, being the kid, says to him. The voices, pa. The, the voices won't stop. They're telling. What the fuck is he gonna do? Yeah, what would you what do? What do, do? What do you do? Like, like I'd be like, get the demons out of your fucking head. No, but but no, that's probably not good. No, he's that's joking. Good. But he's joking. No, he's joking. But Logan, do you do you hear my do you hear my do you understand my sentiment? Like yeah. you're you guys, and, and even to your point, yeah. For for ninety nine point nine percent of students, obviously that's gonna work. I'm talking about red flag cases. So so Yo, you this, would see this that. kid here is showing the propensity to extreme violence. What is the play? Because yeah. right now, even with those red flag cases, states are still failing. If you had a system, like, you got to imagine it. Just, like, close your eyes and imagine a school system where every single day kids meditated, they played outside, they ate healthy, and they were just enjoying going to school and, and love learning. And to do the things they love. And encouraged to do what they love. It would be so screamingly obvious to see the, the kids that are suffering. <laughs> And then as a community, it takes a village to raise a child, right? So as a community, you would say, ah, he's struggling, she's struggling. That must mean their family's struggling. Let's all help them. That's not how America thinks right now. It, we're all in this race. We're all trying to get this big house, this big car, this big boat, this, you know. It, we're competing with each other. We're not focused on helping one another. And that's what we got to get back to. That's actually how this country was started. Here, here's it was another all part homeschooled. of it. It was, it was the, the social anxiety and pressure didn't exist. So it's a creation of what we have now. All right. So here, here, here's another thing with, with what you're talking about, Mike, that kid, that, that kid's a lot of work. And the analogy is this, let's take a dog, a dog that you've had for three years, been a great dog. And all of a sudden the dog starts biting, biting the mailman, biting kids, doing whatever you love the dog, the dog's biting. If you want to, retrain that dog to stop biting it's a lot of work it's a lot of consistent effort mm -hmm. if you get the kid who's doing what you're talking about mike you got to basically commit your life to babysitting that kid and being with them 
morning, noon, and night, keeping them busy, keeping them active, making them tired, um, talking to them, you know, getting them involved it's in work. things. It's a lot of it's work. A lot of work. And that's why parents are, you know, I mean, 50% of the families are divorced. So parents come home, they're like, oh, fuck, I'm tired. Johnny's being an asshole. Go, 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 you know, play on your phone, do whatever. And they don't care. They're, they're, they, they don't have the commitment to put in the time for the long-term gain. Yeah, it's hard. It's Par a lot of well, work. Parenting is fucking hard. So that's what well, I'm saying. If you aren't prepared to be a parent and work to make your child a useful member of society, dude, don't have a child because it's going to make you feel more fulfilled. That's not a that's not a reason to have to start a family. Or going to fulfill your I, like, like I don't know. It's, it's, your, oh, yeah. Your, like, your I have, yeah, man, I have this yearning to 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 make a baby and and it's going to make me happy because it may a lot of a lot of people I feel like have children because it gives them purpose. My purpose is to raise this child. Then make that your purpose. If, if, if that's why you brought this person to the world, make them the best, most productive person they can be. And that should be your prerogative. Number one priority in life. Once you bring a human into this world, you take a back seat to that person until they well, become what happens, their own. What happens when you have the job that you have to work and you have to slave away at 12, you know, 12 hours a day and then you have responsibilities your friends are if you problems. aren't equipped don't to have a child don't bingo don't have the i guess child. i guess the max Fair. point it's getting harder and harder and this is like not even debatable it's getting harder and harder to be equipped to be a parent Fucking in this facts. country facts. Yeah. Because, not, not everyone's facts. a millionaire because 100 percent. because when you look back at the when you look back at the statistics uh, wait, uh, average wage, working wage in this country versus average home price. I mean, it, it used to be like a house costs one hundred and twelve thousand dollars, and you made thirty five thousand dollars a year. You could pay the house off in yeah. you know five six years. Now there's people still making thirty five thousand dollars a year, and the average home price is up five hundred percent. Millennials and Gen it's, Z are fucked right it's now. Are insane. Fucked. So it's becoming harder and harder yeah. to be a, a a parent when maybe you are a single parent, and maybe that sucks. Maybe you are a single parent, and now you have to work two or even three jobs to try to to try to just keep that kid alive let alone facilitate their long-term success and and make sure that they're not causing trouble in school so on and so forth mm. and it's just i guess to your point anytime you have a kid in a way you are rolling the dice a little bit that you may end up <laughs> ending up in a situation that that is more than you had wished for and i think and i think that see all of these all of these issues snowball to involve a million I other know, issues i know i know i know and that's why that the, the talk <laughs> is kind of tricky but like it, that that point supports the idea of waiting to have children until you can make sure that you're creating a happy home for that child. Yeah, okay. People rush to have children yeah. with people that, because like you said, they want to have a, ch a child to fulfill themselves or to give themselves purpose. It's probably, it's definitely more important to create that home unit where you have two working parents or maybe one working, one at, one at home mom, which I know is a, is a big talking point right now in the world of trying to bring women back to the home so that they can care properly for children while men work whatever i'm sure there's a lot of stuff there but so, like so not to branch out and make this yeah. even more yeah, complex it's, conversation because you're right because you're right it's all it's a, a b c d e we got the whole alphabet and more yeah well, we're, we're in the wing things at this point bro. <laughs> we are comic, we are comic sans, <laughs> comic sans of all types <laughs> but um, it ain't fun uh, uh <laughs> no it's 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 like if you shit man Completely lost my train of thought. Wait, 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 wait! wait. I, I, feel, I, no, no, no! I, 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 feel, I feel like I, I wanted to. I, I had something good. Go okay. for it. Nobody right. wants to put in the work. No, they that wasn't it. That, was, that wasn't it. That's all there is to it. <laughs> okay, we all take guesses. I got a question, but I'll let you. Do you want me to ask you the questions? Maybe it'll come back. I had some important. Wait, wh wait. What were you saying, please? Family unit, having children, uh, working class, Women why working at home, woman working at home, why it costs more money now to buy a house, uh, making sure you have a happy unit, uh, 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 the 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 the, the uh, responsibility of you roll the dice when you have a kid. It yeah. could be a fucking little fucking bugger. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 Neil wants to go to the pub. Fuck I got it. nothing. Damn it. I, I nothing. fucking knew nothing. we were going to Okay, yeah, I got a question. Uh, too much vodka. I sorry. saw Jesus. Sorry. Hey, sorry. <laughs> can I talk about Jesus? Can, huh? I, can I ask one question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To parlay with yeah, yeah, yeah. What about stay-at-home moms? Oh, uh, was that was that it? Was that what I was going to talk about? Stay-at-home moms. How about just uh, moms? Moms. Spencer has a question for you. Shout out Pam. So... <laughs> well, you've you've been I've I've been watching. Uh, you know, you've been having some really big influential people on the show. You know, you've had Tony Robbins, John Cena. You've been having a lot of people on the show. Um, 
you know, Shaq. Like, there's so many names. Um, Number one podcast. S- Ruby Rose. So, a lot of them, once they reach a certain level of wealth and power and status, you know, they get into philanthropy. Mountain. So, yeah. so the second mountain. The second mountain. There we go. Yeah. So, do you have any? vision or calling or do you feel like you're getting near that education the only thing i would do is education because <laughs> that's got to make you happy I, if i'm not you could start a school if i'm i'm probably going to i would love i would love to see you raise a lot of children through an education system also involving greg i think this guy's got some wisdom but i would love to see you get involved in that uh, it will definitely not include Greg. Whoa. Why not? <laughs> he's got to teach, teach, teach him how to chop nah, wood. Nah, 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 nah. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's just, uh, it's just uh, I, feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of children will crack under your regime. No, no. They're <laughs> not going to Dude, what about the Spartans? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but bro, are we trying to raise the country we building smart weapons? Absolutely. We're trying to build <laughs> tough people. But you, can also, you can have the contrast. You can have Greg that teaches them to... to uh, be the ultimate versions of their physical Look, look, look. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Being tough... Being resilient is a major life key. All right. That's so that's if you can. If this you can man master- helped you become very physical. Right. Yeah. Here, here's an example. When we were in the Cub Scouts, we would go to this little Cub Scout outing, and and was, Logan, was they're Scouts. going on a hike, but all the Cub Scout leaders want to go Scouts. on a hike yeah. on a bullshit trail. And Logan and Jake are like, "Let's go down here." I'm like, "All right, let's go." And the Cub Scout leaders are like, "Oh, we can't go down." I'm like, "Bullshit, we can go down here. Come on, we can get down." <clears throat> and we all climb down this hill. And then one dude's like, oh, you're going to have to get back up. I'm like, we'll get back up. And we had one fat kid on there that that was just, yeah, that's right. If you're a fat kid, you're a fat kid. Get over it. That's part of life. So the fat kid kid was like struggling. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, you can do this, dude. You can do this. We're going to help you get up. And and we're all behind him putting our hands underneath his feet so he can climb up the hill. Pushing on him. And the kid's kid's stressing and and he's like, He's like, Mr. Paul, I don't know if I can do it. I go, no, stop saying that. You can do it. I know you can. You're a big kid, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and he made it up. He got up over the hump. And No, he was always right. It's ironically where mm-hmm. my whole entire brand of being a maverick came from. Like, I would, I would just, if, some, if everyone's going this way, I'm going to go that way. Yeah. I, it, like, I don't like to follow the path because that's what everyone knows and has been through. Yeah. How can you learn differently? How can you challenge your mind and yourself and... <laughs> And, be curious. And, yeah, be inquisitive. Be curious. Be explorative. Ask questions, but a lot of people just don't have it in them. You know, some people are just. And all the other you Cub can Scouts. That. You personally, as Logan Paul, you can inspire that. Mike, you can inspire that. Spencer inspires that every day. Greg, I know you inspire that through your own format, Thank you. but it happens. Yeah, and all the other Cub Scout leaders are like, no, we're gonna go here. And I'm like, no, that's bullshit. We learn and get better through trial and error and hardship. How does one have the motivation to want to? better the human race instead of just make you and your family happy and proud while I'm alive. You are still young. I think you're asking that question from a perspective of someone who has not yet accomplished everything they have set out to do. Personally, I think you'll eventually get to that point. But uh, the ultimate goal would be to be the person that is able to uplift those, even if it's just someone who's one step behind you if you are further on the path from them, further on the path than them, you can help them up one step that will inevitably help the next person behind them, no matter what it is, whether that's a single conversation, a person who's going through a hard time, that you can help them with a, a personal anecdote that will yeah. allow them to arrive there. Just being willing to be vulnerable and share yourself, Fair. you will help that next person, Fair. which will then in turn lift others. Pay it forward. I think it's Pay also your, your spiritual connection you know like if you got if you got that spiritual connection have you identified with a deity J- jc man let's go i all, met him all, today bro. always you always always hear about dude. this how'd you meet him bro <laughs> don't even don't even tickle no, my face i got i got bro. one I'll, i will i will is this yours. about fucking education no it's about Amsterdam. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> yes. share where you met jesus i'll share where i met jesus dude okay we're, we're holding on the floor for george over here bro <laughs> yeah. shout out george <laughs> yeah yeah <sighs> shit i want to I saw, I saw him. So what happened? How did you meet I Jesus saw jo- no, oh, Well, I saw Jesus, but I also saw George. Today? Uh, wait, should I talk about? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I saw George on an airplane. Really? Yeah. For real? Yeah, I was, I was getting loaded up to come here the other day, and uh, I was just sitting in my seat, and I was like locked in. I had my headphones in, and I was on my phone. And, you know, I'll look up every once in a while. I was like, people are passing by, and I looked up, and... 
There he was, bro. <laughs> a bearded, you know, a bearded George. A Syrian man. A Syrian George with Bell and Reed, his videographer. They Bell got engaged. His, his fiance. Congr yeah, congrats. I did, of course. And, uh, and well, well, I'll get to that quickly. But, uh, you know, I think I think him and I probably had both, uh, and I don't I don't want to tell too much of, but I think him and I had both kind of played out like what that interaction would be like if we <laughs> ever like ran into each other. You know what I'm saying? And he, I just, I just like shot up out of my seat and just immediately like put my hand out. Like it was it was almost like instinctual, and he did the same thing, and. He went, I, I just, like, we, we had, like, a, a hug and stuff in the hallway of the plane where there's, like, people sitting around, like, looking yeah, at us. Hugged. Yeah. And then, I, and then he just went, and, and same with Bell, and then they kind of just, like, passed through. Uh, and then I was just, like, let's, like, link up after get off the plane, and we, like, walked out of the airport together and had, like, a great conversation. He's, he's crushing it, and... Um, yeah, I don't want I don't want to talk about it too much because it's it, it, I, I I would hope that a portion of it will be used for us to all fix not not that there's Spencer anything and fix, I are gonna have that we're Spencer and I are gonna go out and have a podcast with George <laughs> we're, I mean it's a great we're, gonna, show. we're gonna do our three uh yeah George hit us up our three, <laughs> three, three, three. George George <laughs> if you're watching yeah. this just like, just let's do it. It would break the internet because everybody hates these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait and to hear George's exact, it, exact, yeah. exact. No, you said it earlier. <laughs> interpretation of how that interaction. No, he yeah, George is gonna no, be like, we were on our way out. Do not try to punch him in the face. No, no, no. no. This one I can confidently say it was it was great, and it was honestly, at least for me, I'll speak for myself. It felt like. uh we hadn't skipped a beat. I mean, it was just a really, really just like super positive conversation. We were cracking jokes, talking about, you know, a, a million things. And um, But tell us about Jesus so where, seeing yeah, Jesus which, underwater. Where'd yeah, yeah. where you meet Jesus? I don't hear okay. About. Well, that's it's, what, it's George, not, I'm going to one up you. Jordan. It's not as bro. It's not as deep as you think. It, like pun, pun intended. Well, it's about thirty he, feet. He, he, thirty feet underwater, and there's a statue of Jesus Whoa. underwater. Oh. That's it. He, sw he that's went scuba it? diving oh. in Miami. Yeah, bro. It's fine. <clears throat> okay. He, he, well, that's kind of cool. I'm sorry, bro. You didn't have some sort of like realization like self epiphany moment it wasn't like i saw he wasn't like he was in a penny fountain he wasn't in the shallow end of the, the kids pool at atlantis i had to fucking do something i had to go to him i was did called jesus, to him and jesus i had like to speak? go and by the way i had to pay 560 bucks no way to go to him. <laughs> ah. so I'm fucking try to minimize my savior you, you mean you made okay, a, dude you made a Don't donation you think you to the church chill out when it comes to these conversations Logan? did you receive no no tell, no, my, no, let me tell no. my story i'm very outspoken <laughs> and defensive of jc I, there's a real viral clip on tiktok right now i sent it to you the other day that's my guy. I went out on a boat today, 3.5 miles off the shore of Key Largo, which I had to drive for two hours to fucking get to. You're making it you drove like I saw him in the shower. OK, he was underwater. Okay. Jesus Christ was 30 okay, feet dude. underwater. Okay. He was had fish swimming out of his ears and I had to fucking take a boat to him. OK, okay. don't stop minimizing this. Okay, man. So I had to go out. Put on a full fucking outfit. The fucking waves were. It was like you know North Sea TikTok. Like, dude. Whoa. 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 The boat was going up and down, and the dude driving the boat, he's like, he's forty meters port side. And dude, I had to put on a whole outfit. Okay, jump in the water. The waves were pretty gnarly. Like, Bro, I, I was really I was in the ocean today. I took a little bit of mushrooms. I'm not gonna lie. Let I'm me guess. You didn't see me. No, I saw a man. That's me. awesome. But. There were no waves <laughs> that you speak of. Damn. What Man, it, I, I was no, he was two hours south. He was two hours south. I was, was four <laughs> You're lying about miles <laughs> off. Sure, Spencer. Were you okay. diving off I of wasn't. an oil rig no, in the right. Gulf yeah. of Mexico? <laughs> you were judge. in the, uh, the South Beach, bro. <laughs> there was Cuban music playing. He said you're a wave Dude, liar. Y'all just lying about y'all, and now even you are turning on the Lord. I'll just say it right now, dude. Okay, he was underwater. Well, listen. So I I jumped in the water. I was able to swim all the way down to this submerged statue, okay, of Jesus with his hands outstretched. Beautiful. And I flippered down my big flipper feet with even extended flippers on them. <laughs> and I, dude, I tried three times, but one of the times I was able to actually go. -a -ling -a -ling no on his way! Hand. You dapped up. You dapped up. Dapped up, Jesus. No right way! Up. And honestly, dude, all jokes aside, it was a cool moment because it's a cool statue, and a lot of people go to like Christ the Redeemer. Great, dude. Anybody can go to that. <laughs> but can you deep dive into the ocean abyss where there's like fish that go like this? Right. 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. chill with Christ underwater. Yeah, for sure. That's One there. of them was a grand barren fit. I don't. We saw some tarpon the other day. That was nice. Thanks, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, what was yours? I was in Amsterdam. I went to the Rijk Museum. I walked around for a long time. I saw my nice uh, stained glass windows of all the great Dutch historical figures. And then I was walking through, and I happened upon this one statue that was carved out of marble. And I've been really focused on stonework lately. I'm very interested. I want to really put some time in with some five axis CNCs that can carve whatever I want to make out of stone Whoa. because it's this fascinating technology that can do what the, the ancient greats could do with just their hands. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. I don't have time. I'm sorry. I just, you ever I used an auger? I have, of course. Of course. <laughs> a post I don't, digger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dig some uh, fence posts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just in Amsterdam riding bikes and uh, exploring the canals, you know. But the Reich Museum is fantastic. Dutch history is pretty interesting. We got a little bit of it. The one thing that is very confusing, you've been to Amsterdam, right? Of course. You, have you been to Amsterdam? Uh-uh. So the Dutch <laughs> language is very similar to English, but it makes no sense. <laughs> None of the words are English at all, but they look like English words. So the entire time I spent trying, to, I'm a word guy, you know. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Trying to like understand what I was doing. And I on day four, I completely lost my mind. So I was walking around the Reich Museum on day four with the Dutch language not being understandable by me. And... Uh, I found the statue and it was a very calming moment. Hey, while we're here, guys, I want to go get. Hey, while we're hey, here, guys, all the looks like somebody drank too much eleven vodka. <laughs> I did, I did. Thanks, uh, thanks, guys. Who? Who are you thanking? <laughs> Duh, dude, Mark Simpkins and John Roberts. Just say it. No. Just say it right John. now. They like these fuck ups even more, dude. Say the names. Just the names. Mark Roberts and Mike Simpkins. You're just saying names. Mark Roberts and Mike Simpkins. No. I know, but I, we got to start from the top. No, we don't. They, yo, if you're drinking 10 vodka, you're one short. Mark Simpkins and Mark Roberts. God. No, no, no. Mike, ah! Simpkins. Ah! Mike Simpkins, Mark, Mark Roberts. Roberts. We're going to fix education together. Thank you thanks, so much thanks, to 11 guys. Vodka. You guys, if you're in Miami, go to 11. And don't forget, to, I can't give a promo for alcohol, but he can. Uh, I can't. But they gave us this nice facility, and we want to thank them for doing that. Thanks. <laughs> Did you pee so in the it, street? I actually, I really, I can, I'm going to share one thing. I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone and share a little weird thing. Nice. I stopped at a hotel to have a uh, lunch while uh, we were charging the Tesla that I was riding in with my friend who's running an amazing company. I can't wait to have this conversation with you. Um, but yeah, I, I peed in the street there. Isn't I, it I so had, weird? <laughs> Isn't I, did, it? I, I did. I, wait, I do you know about I this? No. So there's, <clears throat> there's little just like steel structures where you like slip in one side of it and it's kind of like a semi enclosure and you just piss like right in front of all the stores and there you see like feet trickling by under the thing and the piss just drains onto the Whoa, sidewalk and cool. into a little drain and right into the canal. And, and just, right into your drink water. It smells supply. like yeah. piss, yeah, bro. Yeah. It smells like piss and you're mo but from the stall, you can like peek over and see like chicks twerking naked in the windows with red lights. They're like, come fuck me. It's not true. It's <laughs> what, what, what do saying? you mean it's not true? Dude, the red light no, district. They're, but they're hidden down the alleys. And here's nah. the, deal. the The guy that I was talking about, the company is amazing. They do they do self-cleaning toilets and they will no longer Whoa. have the piss smell. You'll no longer have the issue of people peeing in the streets. Dude, I've never done this. And I've shamed, I think, all of you for doing it, mm -hmm. for leaving on the podcast to go pee while we're shooting go the ahead. podcast. And I wasn't going to do it. But now that we're only talking about piss, dude, I'm you about to, to fucking explode. <laughs> I, and I didn't want to leave yeah. during your story. Be a good I have time to then. so bad. We'll do Damn, it. bro. This is a big moment for wow. me. This Get is a huge just, moment he, for me. He left us alone. Mike, you're in charge. No, no, no. No, it's not what even because of that. It's not even because of that. It's because the amount of shit that he has given me for having to pee during the show at my advanced age yep. where I'm requiring of a fucking toilet, bro. Oh, no. No way, Just pee bro. in the street. Pee in the street. Pee Go in the, to pee Amsterdam, in the pool. Dude. There's a giant pool right there. You can take a leak in, Logan. Piss in the pool. Oh, uh, well, right. here we are. Three ex co hosts of Impulse. Mike, I'll oh. never forget on like, what what, what happened? Was it the first episode when you had, had to get up and attack. leave? Of course. <laughs> I remember that? Yeah. that. Are you serious? Of course I do. That was iconic. I, it was with but the you sex therapist. So you were clean, sweating dude. like crazy. You know, that, uh, that made it into the fifth vital. 
that story made it into the book. It's the second, really? it starts the second chapter. I'm in the bathroom splashing water on my face. And I had a, I mean, Dylan, like yeah, I had a panic yeah. attack, like, wow. a panic attack. And you know what? And you just faced your demon right there. Literally. It, it, there are still things that I don't do in life because of fear, which is, which is, which I hate to say, I hate to admit that there I are things that I'm, all of us. Do. I, I, I would agree. I would, I would, I would think that as well. Like there are some big podcasts that I've been wanting to do that I've been like, um, kind of like a little bit nervous to go on. There's a, a, a guy by the name of Patrick Beck David, who I love, who, who I've been good, getting right? emails from his team every, like I'm literally supposed to go on the show on Tuesday in Fort Lauderdale. He's a good dude. And I, this year I'm, I'm pushing myself to, to not be nervous anymore because do you want to know what's happened since then? The more I did it, the more routine it became and the less I was scared to do it. Like you just have to do it. There's so when you no get excuse. on, just tell them, just say, hey, man, I'm nervous as shit to be here. I think your mic is off. Yeah, how did GP's mic get we, caught? Can we just, can we just plug it back in? You're good. Am I? There you Am go. I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so when you get there, just be like, hey, dude, I'm I'm happy to be here, but I'm nervous as shit. Yeah. And he's going to be like, all right, bro, just chill. He's a good dude. It, but the weird thing about it is GP is like, People are less willing to believe you when you say that when you have like 600 podcasts <laughs> in the back. And they're like, dude, I just watched you do a show with Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. last week or Kevin Hart or John Cena or whoever. It's just, it's weird. But, but, you know, I think that's a very human thing, though, you know, to be able nerves. to address that. Like, yeah, yeah, I've been sitting in groups of people with no cameras and anything, and people are nervous to speak. I mean, I get nervous sometimes when you're speaking. So, right. Yeah, we're human. That's yeah, part facts. of it. But it is interesting that you bring that up. Lots, I mean, it's been a long time. A lot's changed since then, dude. <laughs> yeah. A lot has changed. And it's, it's, been a, it's been a wild ride. Yeah, when you open up with being vulnerable, it shows a certain amount of strength and courage. If you're like, dude, I know this might sound weird. I've been, I've had 600 podcasts, but I'm freaking out being here. I'm scared shitless. That's true. He's gonna be like, fuck. Okay. He's just, it's just, especially some of these people that are like, that are like masters in their craft. Like yeah, PBD, for example, is like so well schooled and well taught. That's gonna be a good, good platform for you though. Because yeah, I'm pumped, you, you I'm pumped have for that, it. you have that, you know, well versed political side of you. So you're gonna be able to really get it out on that show. He, he also read my book. I oh, sent it nice. to him, and so I, I'm pretty sure he's just going to want to talk about that, which is obviously <laughs> something that's easy for me to talk about. Well, you're but you're probably going to start talking about Taiwan. It's very possible. 12 seconds. It's very possible. <laughs> it's very possible. Welcome back. I was the piss. It was so good. I feel like a new person. <laughs> See, yeah. I told Isn't you. Isn't that a great feeling? Yeah. In the bathroom, I was just thinking about you guys, it, which was odd. I was just thinking about what my What were boys. you thinking about? I was just <laughs> holding, my, holding my wiener. Were you hoping that boys. we were going to hold it down, hold down the fort? We just, I was job. like, what are they going to even talk about? Because I still, there's still one thing that I wanted to talk about. I don't know if it's a good time. Were you guys in the middle of something? I think it's a good opportunity to yeah. part. To Unless you want to clear off Northern Europe first. No, no it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I had a Northern Europe story. But yours might fit better. No, I'll build no. it off Amsterdam. I just wanted to ask about you, Mac. Yeah. What has life been like after Impulsive? After 4546 White Oak Avenue? Ooh, you, wow. you, move, you move back to Cleveland, Ohio. You know, our Great home city, city where yep. we met. Yep. What what's what's you been doing? A lot of things, as as everybody knows, but continuing the artistic journey. I have found my my stride in understanding that I am a person that has complex and deep. Feelings, emotions, intentions that as I continue to dive further into myself, I will arrive at the things that I'm supposed to learn for me and hopefully share those with other people so they don't have to learn themselves. Um, but I've been painting a lot. I've been writing a lot. I put out my first book last, uh, it was, that would have been two years ago now. So I'm on number two right now, writing Providence. that. Providence? Providence was the first book. Uh, second book is gonna be uh, an upside down and backwards version of that. But uh, that's all I'll say at the moment. I've been exploring the real estate industry and trying to figure out how I can bring the ideas of the houses that I've always dreamed of, these uh, extensive buildings and community gathering spaces to life. I'm not an architect, but I am a dreamer. And I spend a lot of time when I'm uh, sitting, meditating, dreaming about these places that can invoke change for communities for people individually so i can uh spark the spirit of everyone that's trying to discover what life truly is mm. um and i've been really reducing my proximity to my simple life in 
Westlake, Ohio. I do love Cleveland, but I do specifically love Westlake because it was a place that I was raised in and it has taught me so much and to give back to my community in the the way that I do and the people around me, the artists that I work with, that I can share the moments that I've gained with you two. Spencer, of course, this guy's literally changed my life in the past two days, but also the past of my life. Greg, you've also in, inspired my life significantly in Westlake, but I've learned so much from you two. And every day I am met with a new artist or a familiar artist that I'm working with that I can share the things I've learned from you two and the world that we've created here and make their lives better and more uh, possible. So a little, little bit of creative coaching, plus of course my own creative pursuits. Very well, cool. Dude, me and you have a, will always have a creative bond because you designed everything for the Fit Vital, which is so sick, yeah. dude. Not, wow. not a lot of people know, know but that. Yeah, cover the... I, I took the photo for the cover. I did the audio book for the Fit Vital. <laughs> <laughs> Sat in that... Oh, by the way, by the way, after four years, I got a, a DM yesterday from someone who realized that in the audio book, I said that I would go to cities to sell people to weed that I'd never even met. <laughs> Not to sell weed to people I'd never even met. I was selling people so to weed. weed. <laughs> we can fix it, we One can fix it. One person out of the hundreds of thousands of people. We can fix it. it. But yeah, we, but yeah, yeah. It's, been a, it's been a wild run. It's crazy to be sitting back here yeah. with you guys. So it's stuff like that. It's, it's things like that. And I, I, I would like to take a moment to say that a lot of people don't realize that I do every single creative uh, outlet, which is audio, video, photo, poetry, painting, podcasting, and all these things. And I'm so happy that I'm able to encourage and support others that are doing that. That's what I do every day. I'm, I, I love my life. Fantastic, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's a hard pursuit. Uh, I feel like I feel like uh, to be a master at all of those is super difficult, you know. And like in a, a short term. Yeah, for sure. Are you thinking super long term? Of course. As a 360 degree artist? 100%. Do you think it's going to be harder to brand yourself as such? I feel like I'm sitting on a podcast that is reaching millions of people. And if the well. people know truly that I'm the person <laughs> that does that, well, maybe hundreds of thousands. <laughs> But uh, maybe, maybe the clip will reach more. It doesn't really matter. But I, well, I I'm aware that the clip's stupid. Yeah. 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 No, I, I know Caleb. <laughs> Caleb <laughs> Caleb's gonna do his job. <laughs> Caleb, 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 we were talking. To, I was talking to Caleb. He's gonna put. Uh, he's gonna put the GTA videos underneath this. But just run, just run the sound of the GTA <laughs> okay, videos. Please, for yes, please, yes, please, yeah, please, 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 please. Subtitles, do subtitles on my yes. but just run that. Yes. <laughs> Subway yes. servers too. Add Subway servers on top of the GTA. AI photos of Taylor Swift. Whatever we can get. Someone sent a meme to me that that's how I watched Oppenheimer or how I expected Oppenheimer would be. <laughs> no, thing I ever. said that. Oh, yeah. oh no, there I was a meme of it where there was like five different screens. It was like Subway Surfer. It was like, like, bro, expected Oppenheimer to be like this. <laughs> and like, there's Oppenheimer with like GTA in the bottom, Subway Surfer on the left. Uh, TikTok. Uh, You'd yeah, probably bro. enjoy it more. Maze Runner. Oh, no, yeah, he would have made it through it at least. Mm. Finland doing this. I get to the luxury of adventuring. Like we talked about what everybody does. Yeah. I love to adventure. I love to explore this world. I've been to some of the coolest places. That, and that, some I'm, coolest so, I, I'm sorry. People. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. That has to have an asterisk next to it. That what do you mean? Man, the first time we went to my ranch, I was <laughs> yeah. like, come come see the top <laughs> of this come, hill. Come, yeah, yeah. Come climb this hill. Well, You're not a ranch guy. No, he's not a walk yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. You don't, he, if yeah. it involves walking. No, so, Mike, Mike got pulled by dogs on a fucking Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, you know what's funny? He, he is right. When it comes to actually the, the movement of my legs, that part is limited on the adventure <laughs> side. So scooters and that type of thing, yeah, necessary for sure. Or dogs. This was the only trip in all my years of doing this uh, adventure for content format that Logan Paul reached out to me and said, I am jealous of what I'm seeing right now. Like, like what you are doing right now is fucking insane. It was everything that, I've never done and have wanted to my whole life. It, it was, was incredible. What was it? I went to Finland. I went to a place called Lapland in Finland, a, a city called Katila. Uh, which is which is uh, just inside the Arctic Circle, so about as far north. I mean, you've you've probably you've been up there because you were in Oslo and in parts of Norway, so you've been up in that area. Uh, it was my goal to fly from London to uh, Katila to see the Northern Lights, 
And while I was on the way out there, uh, I realized that the cloud cover was pretty fucking gnarly. Just going to that area in no way ensures that you're gonna see. How many people watching this right now, how many people sitting in this room right now have the goal of one day seeing that that insane solar well, me, phenomenon? Kevin, we tried, we tried. We tried like extensively for like two, three days in a row. Nothing. Cloud get, cover, yeah, lack of solar flare. So so I had done a ton of research of and 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 watched the weather for that for that week and it looked horrible. It was like 17% chance I was gonna see it. I get there, go to dinner, I'm eating some of this Norwegian crab, which is a specialty in the area, and they're trying to feed me reindeer, which I had just pet one, so I didn't want to eat fucking Rudolph, bro, by any means. <laughs> and I get a FaceTime from Martin Garrix, the DJ, who is in Lapland. Hey man, saw your story. Saw you're in Katila. I'm here too. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Yeah, man. The Northern Lights that you're here to see because you posted on your story about, oh, they're out right now. Like, come to where I am right now. So I, we get in the fucking wow. Sprinter. Me, sweet, sweet, sweet Sarah, David the German. We go out there and there they are. This massive solar phenomenon in all its glory. Little did I know that 2024 winter was supposed to be the biggest uh northern lights year on record like one of the biggest ever the clouds parted and i got these i got wow. i'll put show some imagery here of, of these pictures that we got so so but just finland in general happy rated number one country for happiness in the world six or seven years in a row now i went there for my film oh, did, where do you to go to, uh, to uh system. helsinki helsinki yeah just just an incredible incredible place and then randomly martin's there so so Gar martin garrick's leaves and I, the next day I get a DM from Lando Norris, the F1 driver from McLaren, possibly one of the biggest personalities on the F1 scene right now. Everyone loves Lando Norris, massive, massive, you know, racer. And he's like, hey man, saw you're in Katila. I'm here too. You, sorry, what did you just say? Lando, you're in the Arctic Circle right now. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing here? So I go and I meet him and we, we, we link up at this karaoke place and we sit and there's a bunch of other racers there and we have this night. And I say to him, man, for, for content tomorrow, it'd be sick to race you on ice bound go-karts. And I'm like, dude, he's never going to say yes to this. McLaren's not going to let him race me on a fucking ice track. <laughs> he goes, yeah, okay, man. Shows up the next day. We fucking ice Mario Kart ice oh, race hey. against oh, each other. Around, lit, dude. lit, wild. Did bro. he smoke you? So, <sighs> Lando, I owe, you, I owe you a bit of an apology. I presented it on my vlog that that I'd won. There was a moment where I hit a a red turtle shell and spun out on the track, uh, and he waited for me. Uh, and and so the thing about these ice so carts, well, the thing about these ice carts is the heavier the person in it, the better grip it has on the track. Mm -hmm. And he didn't realize that he was dealing Not with he was, you know, <laughs> racing against. <laughs> The fattest man on the planet, bro. Yo, come on. So my tires were just digging in. I, at the very last second, I zoomed oh, past them. Oh no way! You blue shelled them. Yeah, yeah, no, for real. And so it was just a just a wild kind of like once. And then of course the 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 huskies, you know, riding this dog sled, dog sledding, kind of feeling like an aborigine in these negative twenty Fahrenheit temperatures. I think an aborigine is in Australia. Yeah, with, yeah, it has right. no snow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Side. All right, feel, <laughs> feeling feeling like a native Finlandian. No. You know, yeah. just just. The huskies pulling you got a break that you have to hit with your foot that's the only way to stop these these mother efforts from pulling they just want to pull these dogs are bred to pull down. pull put your foot down you exactly foot down. it was it was yeah, awesome it was an awesome trip and, and honestly just refreshed and reinvigorated my desire to continue to churn out that type of content which is this exploration of this th this planet and and the cultures that exist in each country, the food that exists in each country, the animals, the the the, the natives, and to just continue to dive into that because I, uh, it's it's my it is my favorite thing on the planet to do. Shout out to Anthony Bourdain, who is my 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 hero, uh, R.I.P. and and did, just so much inspiration from that guy. Did you see Pete over there? Uh, unfortunately, he's still he's still floating, man. Still floating. He has not come back to uh, so to the flat right. earth, unfortunately. Flat. So <laughs> so flat. Dude, the world, world, no, the earth, earth is, is flat. flat. <laughs> Go watch your flat earth. I, I got tagged in a story, Instagram story the other day. They're like, Logan, please make another one of these. It's the best thing you've ever done. I saw that oh, story. Did, saw I did, well. and, and it will always piss me off to know that we had the Russian episode written. We had Russian visas. Oh, it was so I good. have a Russian visa in my passport book <laughs> like, that makes me dude, look like. I had to take it out. 
to, oh, to get in and out. Of, to get oh in, my because, God. because when I went into Ukraine, I was like, <laughs> through my passport and that Russian visa was there, but we never went. So I was like, oh, I think that's uh, going to come. Do you up. remember the plot? Of course. Okay, so can we give uh, a quick brief synopsis? Because yep. we're never going to make this movie. So this is when slap fighting was <laughs> popping off. Before Dana White even way, heard of it. Way, way before. before. This was when we first started. We're like, yo, this is entertaining there's yeah. a little meat on this bone so we uh made this script that would God. be like the flat earth half real half fake like they wouldn't know that where they're filming like scripted bits where i was going to enter this competition the legitimate like russian slap fighting competition <laughs> and i was probably going to do well and and eventually we <laughs> in our script we uh we made our antagonist the russian slap fighting champion whose name was dumpling and and we're like yo this guy can fucking slap and i was supposedly going to meet him in the championship uh we were going to the the coordinators agreed with us that i would slap first <laughs> You're on, forgetting a part. On all of them, what? You were there to avenge my dad. No, no, I, I'm, not there there I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So, so along the way, just like in the Flat Earth Conference where we we got in together, I was like, Mike, you should enter the competition. <laughs> this was in our script, and Mike's like, uh, All right, man. Oh. And so, first round, whoever slaps Mike, it's a legitimate slap, by the way. There's like a, a room full of people watching, and they wouldn't know this, but essentially in our script, the guy would kill Mike. <laughs> actually actually murder him and so that becomes part of my ethos is like i'm gonna avenge my friend and show these fucking russians that i can slap and i meet this guy in the championship we scripted two endings but we also developed a, 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 love a russian love interest <laughs> she was a she was a minesweeper, a, a minesweeper. So, because this is fucked in our script in russia there were mines everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> like, everywhere. Like, just, it's it's like Cold War era <laughs> mines. Dude, which, by accurate. the way, is true. It's, it's pretty accurate. accurate. Yeah. And so I ended up falling in love with this girl. She was a, she was a mine sweeper. And um, I think in our script, whether I ended up winning or losing, um, at the at the very end, Mike somehow comes back to life in a wheelchair with like a neck brace. He's like, bro, I made it. I made it. You won. Everyone, you found the girl. This is great. And then somehow he ends up like rolling down a hill forever <laughs> for three minutes. <laughs> He's rolling down a hill in a wheelchair for three minutes. And, and the whole time we're like, no, Mike. But somehow he keeps going. He's dodging all these obstacles. Like, we think he's going to die again. Our friend just came back to life, but he's on a cusp of death again. Finally, he makes it to the bottom of this hill. We're like, yo, he, yeah. And he turns around. He's like, yeah, we're fucking mad. Mine goes off. <laughs> <laughs> Mike explodes. Uh, Story uh, ends. But we had it all scripted. We had literally, by the way, <laughs> scripted down to like actual lines. Like we, the thing was ready to go. Like it was yeah. packaged, like, ready to do rock. Do you guys think you'll make movies at some point? I, for I, sure. all, I want to make for them sure. with him. You for sure. <laughs> for so, sure. but 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 Every in the vein of of flat Earth. I mean, dude, flat Earth. Like it, it's fucked up to say this, but like, I want I want my flowers, bro. And I, we, you know, what, actually, we <laughs> we want our flowers for that product. Not enough people are talking about that product. No, no, do you no, know? No. Do you know that it's table stakes to date me? That you have to watch that with me. <laughs> do you know? I don't want. I was about to say. Do you know how many girls have shit, baby? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> she's gone. I'm she's not even there. <laughs> she's watched it. I forced her to watch it. She was like, she she looked at me at the end and was just like. What do you, what I, do you I, want I, to say? I've shown Nina some clips. It's 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 very funny. I think I think uh, yeah, movie making is on the agenda. You know, one thing at a time. Yep, yep. Uh, we got to be Next a action hero. Right WWE there. superstar first. Get that title. <laughs> fix the country. And then go go make some <laughs> fix the country. And go make and some movies. Before that, can we get some dinner? I'm hungry, guys. Yeah, uh, that's eat, it. That's it. Eat. That's all we got. Um, uh, Greg, Spencer, Mac. Thank you guys for joining us. For real, thank you guys. Love you, bro. Um, I love you guys for real. Uh, all of Amazing. you, including you, Dad. Um, love you like a son, Logan. Th thank you. I, yeah. I, I think <laughs> I earned some. I think I earned some favorite son brownie points this week. I'll just say it. I came and saw your new house for the first time, and Jake didn't. And so <laughs> uh, I earned some brownie points, and I'm Greg's favorite son at the moment. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We love you. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace. Out. Oh.